Howdy y'all, DJ TJ with Inkscape Tutorial 18, Layers. So there's three different ways to access your layers or manipulate layers. You have a layer palette, you also have your quick layer commands here, and you have a layers drop down. So I'll press 5 to bring the page front. I'm going to go ahead and draw a couple shapes. Alright, if you want to make your layers palette a little bit bigger, move your cursor until you see the double arrow, left click, hold, and drag. To drop it down, move it here, left click, hold, and drag. And there we go. Now I'll be working a lot between this layers palette and the um, layers drop down. They sort of do the same thing, but this is more of a visual res representation. So, what is a layer? Well, I like to think about any object you create in Inkscape as a page in a book. And each layer is as a book. And there's sub layers which can be chapters. And when you sort of stack your books on top of each other, that's what makes all your layers. So, let's look what we got. All these objects are in this layer because we only have one layer. If we wanted to add a second layer, we can click here, create new layer. We can also go here, add layer, which is shift control N. So when you click here, it's going to ask you to rename the layer. We'll go ahead and name it layer two. It's going to ask you your position above or below current. So we'll go ahead and put it below and add. There you go. Now we have two layers. If I want to rename the top one, I can select that layer and go layer, rename layer, or I can just double click on it and rename it. I'll press one and then enter. So if you want to see something to make sure that if your layer has anything on it, you can always use the eyeball to quickly see if there's something on your layer by turning it on and off. The lock locks the layer so now nothing can be selected on that layer. It's still visible until you turn the eye off. So those were those two functions. Once again you can also turn a layer on and off and lock it from here. So layer 2 is created but we don't have anything on it. So there's a couple of different ways we can put it. It's an, an object that's already been made on it. Of course we can always select the layer draw a new object and it'll be there. Control Z to undo that. However if you've already drew, drawn an object but you want to put it on a separate layer what you need to do is you can select it, right click it and move to layer or you can select it, go to layer and move selection to layer. It'll bring up this dialog and then you just select the layer you want it to go to and click move. Now this shape has moved to layer number two. Notice that it was on top of the first square but now it's underneath. That's because whatever layer is higher here will be on top. So the higher you are on the layers palette the closer to you the object is on the screen. So let's try that one more time. I'll go layer, add layer, three, we'll go below current. You can also put sub layer of current which is what we were talking about with the uh, chapters. Those are many layers that are sort of attached to that layer. So now I've added a layer. I'm going to move this object to it by selecting it, right clicking, move to layer, selecting the third layer and click and move. Now you notice that it did drop below this shape. So we can check what's on each layer by turning the eyes off and turning them back on. If you wanted to move a layer you can use these functions, the green arrows up and down. Now it'll raise the current layer, just move it up one or you can move it down one. If you want to move it all the way to the top you can click the arrow with the bar. Same functions can be found over here. The quick command for that is control page up and control page down. The one thing good about the layers drop down is most of the functions are very explanatory. They 
pretty much do what they what they're called so there's no real guessing game on what it's going to do here and you can play around with that to sort of manipulate it but it's really it's really simple and intuitive so one last thing is that the layers also have opacity and a blending mode so I'll select layer one and I'll lower the opacity now you can see that it's lowering the opacity of this object but it's not just this object it's everything on the layer so if you had a hundred items here but they were all hundred percent opacity shapes and then you lowered the opacity of the layer down they would all gradually get dimmer I've run into some problems before with having items at different opacity levels created that way or different alpha channels and then lowering your opacity to the layer sometimes it's it's hard to tell and get the, the correct measurement with that so it's just something to check if if your items aren't coming in with full opacity you might want to go to the layer it's on and make sure your opacity is set at 100 so the last thing I wanted to talk about was the blending modes so blending modes add a little bit of extra color functionality to your layers if anybody has worked with Photoshop they'd be um, really familiar with what some of this does so let's just select a layer and you can go through and just sort of play now if you press the down arrow while the object selected it will go through all the different modes and if you notice right here it's showing you what it's doing layers can be really important for a large project because it helps you organize all your work it's also good if you're tracing something out like you've imported a sketch or a scan and you want to trace that out but you don't want to keep clicking on that object so it's handy to put it into another layer and go ahead and lock that layer and there you have it those are Inkscape layers please join us for our next tutorial Inkscape Tutorial 19 Align thanks for watching